it fast. Don't want the boss to get wise. Jeez. <laughs> Ain't the old bastard a riot when he starts that bull about turning over a new leaf? Not a damn drink on the house, he tells me. And all these bums have got to pay up their room rent beginning tomorrow, he says. <laughs> I'll be glad to pay you. Tomorrow. And I know my fellow inmates will promise the same. They've all a touching credulity concerning tomorrows. It'll be a great day for them tomorrow. The feast of all fools. Their ships will come in loaded to the gunnels with canceled regrets and promises fulfilled and clean slates and new leases. Yeah, and a ton of hop. It's all mock the faith. If you know respect for religion, you unregenerate wop. What does it matter if the truth is that their favoring breeze will have the stink of nickel whiskey on its breath? And their sea will be a growler of lager and ale. Ships will long since be looted and scuttled and sunk on the bottom. The hell with the truth. The history of the world proves the truth has no bearing on anything. It's the lie of the pipe dream that gives life to the whole misbegotten mantle out of us, drunk or sober. The old philosopher like Kiki called you. I suppose you don't fall for no pipe dreams. No, I don't. Mine are dead and buried behind me. What's before me is the fact that death is a fine, long sleep. I'm damn tired. And it can't come too soon for me. Yeah, just hanging around hoping you croak, ain't you? Well, I'm betting you have a good long way. Jeez, somebody would have to take an axe to croak you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my bad luck to be cursed with an iron constitution that even Harry's booze can't corrode. The old anarchist wise guy that knows all the answers. Forget the anarchist part of it. I'm through with the movement long since. For I saw that if men wanted to be saved from themselves, that would mean they'd have to give up greed. They wouldn't pay that price for liberty. So I said to the world, God bless all here and may the best man win. Die of gluttony. I took a seat in the grandstand of philosophical detachment to fall asleep observing the cannibals do their death dance. I telling him the truth, Camarade Hugo? Oh, for Christ's sake, don't get the bughouse bump started. Capitalist spy! Booze mouth! Do, pigeon! If the slave's no right to sleep, is it? <laughs> Hello, little Rocky, little monkey face. There are your little slave girls. <laughs> don't be a fool. Loan me a dollar. Damn, push from up! Buy me a drink. He's out again. He's lucky no one don't take his crack serious, or he'd wake up every morning in a hospital. Nobody takes him seriously. That's his epitaph. If I'd been through with the movement long mm -hmm. since, it's been through with him, and thanks to Whiskey, he's the only one who doesn't know it. He's gonna pull that slave girl stuff on me once too often. Well, you'd think I was a pimp or something. A pimp don't hold a job. I'm a bartender. Them tarts, Margie and Pearl, they're just a sideline to pick up some extra dough. Strictly business, like they were fighters and I was their manager, see? I fixed the cops for them so they can hustle without getting pinched. And I don't beat them up like a pimp would. They like me. What if <laughs> I take their money? Tarts can't hang on to dough. But I'm a bartender and I work hard for my living in this dump. Shrewd businessman who doesn't miss an opportunity to get out in the world. Huh? And that's me. Grab another ball, Larry. <laughs> You'd never think all these bums had a bed upstairs to go to. Scared if they hit the hay, they wouldn't be here when Hickey showed up. And they'd miss a couple of drinks. To me, it's not so much the hope of booze, but I've got the blues. And Hickey's a great one to make a joke of everything and cheer you up. Yeah, some kid. <laughs> Remember how he wakes up that gag about his wife when he's cockeyed, crying over a picture and spilling it on you all of a sudden that he left her in the hay with the ice man? <laughs> yeah, I wonder what's happening. 
You could set your watch by his periodicals before this. We always got here a couple of days before Harry's birthday party. And now he's only got till tonight to make it. This dump. <laughs> it's like a morgue with all these bums passed out. It's a lie! You father! Poor devil. I have a pity. That's not good. I'm through with it. Dreaming about his old man. From what the old timers say, the old gent sure made a pile of dough in a bucket shop game before the cops got him. Jeez. <laughs> I've seen him bad before, but never this bad. Look at that getup. Sold this suit and shoes at Sally's two days ago. Sally gave him two bucks and a bum outfit. Yesterday, he sold the bum one back to Sally for four bits. And gets these rags to put on. Now he's through. That Sally's final edition he won't take back for nothing. Willie sure is on the bottom. I ain't never seen no one so bad, except Tiki, on the end of a couple of his bites. It's a great game, the pursuit of happiness. Now we don't know what to do, Bon. He called up his old lady's lawyer like he always does when Willie gets licked. You remember, they used to send down a private dick to give him the rush to kill. But the lawyer tells Harry Nix, the old lady is off for Willie for keeps this time, and he can go to hell. <laughs> As a consolation, he hasn't got far to go. <laughs> You hear the poor fella drink and keep him quiet. But she's gonna get a wink of sleep in my own back room. Listen to the blind eyed default bastard, will you? He give me strict orders not to let Willie hang up no more drinks, no matter what. I said I can't hear you. You're a cockeyed liar. Never refused to drink to anyone needed bad in my life. Told you to use your judgment. You're too busy thinking up ways to cheat me. Well, I ain't as blind as you think. I can still see a cash register, Mrs. Oh, sure, boss. Well, chance of fooling you. I'm always see you on your sidekick, Chuck. Mrs., you're your boilers, not bar keeps. You'd steal the pennies off your dead mother's eyes. <laughs> I'll fire both of you. No one ever played Harry Hope for a sucker. No one but everybody. Oh, the least you could do is keep things quiet. Give me a drink, Rocky. Right? Harry said I'm sorry. I need a drink. Then grab it and try it out of your nose. When? When? I didn't say take a bath. Jeez, look. He's killed half a pint of them. Even bigger than the devil. Half a pint of that dynamite in one swig will fix him for a while. It doesn't kill him. You're right by me. It ain't my booze. Who, who, who's booze? Give me some. Where's Hickey? What time is it, Rocky? Getting near time to open up. Time you've begun to sweep up in a box. Never mind the time. Hickey ain't come. It's time Joe went to sleep again. Hey, I got an idea. Say, Larry, what about that young guy, Perry? Come look you up last night and rented a room. He's upstairs asleep. No hope there, Joe. He's broke. Me and Rocky know it's different. Had a roll when he paid you his room rent, didn't he, Rocky? Yeah, he flashed it like he'd forgotten and tried to hide it quick. He did, didn't he? Yeah, I figured he don't belong. But he said he was a friend of yours. He's a liar. That's true, is his mother and I were friends a few years ago on the coast. You read in the papers about that bombing on the coast where a few people were killed? Well, the one woman they pinched, Rosa Parrott, is his mother. They'll be coming up for trial soon. They haven't got a chance. She get life. I'm telling you all this so you'll know why if Don acts a bit queer and not jump on him. He's her only kid. Why ain't he out there sticking by her? Must be a good reason. I get it. But then what kind of a sap is he to hang on to his right name? I'm telling you, I don't know. And I don't want to know. The hell with the movement and everybody connected with it. <laughs> you 
if there's one thing more than another I can't stand, it's the sucker game you and Hugo calls the movement. Reminds me of a damn fool argument me and Moe's Potter had the other night. He's drunk and I'm drunker, and he says, the socialists and anarchists, we ought to shoot them dead. I said, hold on, hold on. Now, you talk as if the socialists and anarchists were the same thing. The anarchist he never works, he drinks, he never buys. And if he do ever get a nickel, he blows it on bond and wouldn't give you nothing. So you can go ahead and shoot him. But the uh, socialists, sometimes he gets a job. If he gets 10 bucks, he's bound by his religion to split it with you 50 50. So you don't shoot no socialists while I'm around. Because if they broke, then they ain't no good bastards, too. <laughs> we got you. You've got all the beauty of human nature and the practical wisdom of the world in that little parable. Sure. <laughs> Larry ain't the only wise guy in this dump, eh, Joe? <laughs> He's your guy. Hello, Larry. Hello. What's up? Thought you'd be asleep. Oh, I couldn't make it. I uh, thought I might see if you were around. Well, sit down and join the bums, then. The rules of the house are that drinks may be served at all hours. Oh, I get you, but uh, hell, I'm just about broke. Oh, I know, you guys saw... You think I have a role, don't you? Well, I'll show you, you're wrong. You see? They're all ones. See, I gotta live on this till I get a job. Well, you think I made up a phony, don't you? Well, why the hell would I do that? Where would I, Where would I get a role anyway? You don't get rich doing what I've been doing, ask Larry. You're lucky in the movement you get enough to eat. What's the song and dance about? We ain't said nothing. Oh, oh, I was just trying to put you right. <laughs> hey, look, I don't want you to think I'm a tight one. I'll buy you a drink if you want one. If? Yeah. Man, I don't want a drink. You call the morgue and you tell them come take Joe's body away. Because he's sure enough dead. Now, give me the bottle quick, Rocky, before he changes his mind. <laughs> I'll take a cigar when I go in the bar. What do you have? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm on the wagon. What's the damage? Fifteen cents. That must be some booze. It's cyanide cut with carbolic acid to give it a mellow flavor. Here's luck. I guess I'll get back in the bar and catch a couple of winks before opening up time. One drink, guy. Uh... No hope to Harry's birthday party. Unless Hickey shows up. Hickey do come, Larry. You wake me up if you have to bat me with a chair. <laughs> Who's Hickey? A hardware drummer. He's an old friend of Harry Hope's and all the gang. He's a grand guy. Comes here twice a year regularly on a periodical drunk and blows in all his dough. He doesn't run into anyone he knows in his business here. Oh, yes, that's what I want too, Larry. But like I told you last night, I got to stay undercover. You did a lot of hinting, but you didn't tell me anything. Well, you can guess, can't you? So what kind of joint is this anyway? This? This is No Chance Saloon. Bedrock Bar. End of the line cafe, the bottom of the sea rathskeller. Don't you notice the beautiful calm in the atmosphere? That's because this is the last harbor. No one here has to worry about where they're going next, because they can go no further. Although even here they keep up the appearance of life with a few harmless pipe dreams about their yesterdays and tomorrows. What's your pipe dream, Larry? No, I'm an exception. I haven't any left, thank God. But don't complain about this place. You couldn't find a better for lying low. Oh, I'm glad of that. I got uh, knocked off base by that business on the coast. 
Since then, it's been no fun dodging around the country, you know, thinking every guy I see might be a dick. You're safe here. Cops ignore this dump. They think it's as harmless as a graveyard, and be God, you know, they're right. It's been lonely as hell. Christ, I'm glad I found you, Larry. No, I kept, I kept saying to myself, if I can just find Larry, he's the one guy in the world who can understand. Understand what? All I've been through. Oh, oh, I know, you're thinking this guy's a hell of a nerve. I haven't seen him since he was a kid. Well, you know, I've never forgotten you, Larry. You're the one friend of mother's who ever paid any attention to me. I remember you used to ask me questions. You took what I said seriously. I guess I got the feeling in the years you lived with us, you sort of, you know, taken the place of my old man. I don't suppose you remember it. I remember it very well. You were a lonely, serious little shaver then. Why didn't they pick you up when they got your mother in the rest? Oh, oh I, uh, I wasn't around. And uh, as soon as I heard the news, I went undercover. You've noticed my glad rags here. Well, I was staked to them as a disguise. And then I, you know, hung around gambling joints and pool halls and hooker shops, places where they wouldn't look for a wobbly. Uh, pretending I was a... a sport. Anyway, they picked up everybody who was, a, you know, really important, so I guess they didn't think about me till afterwards. They were say the cops got them. And the Burns dicks knew every move beforehand. And that somebody in the movement must have sold out and tipped them off. Yeah, it hasn't uh, come out who it was yet. It may never come out. I guess who it was must have made a bargain for the Burns men to keep him out of it. My God. I hate to believe it in any of that crowd. Oh, I know they were damn fools, as stupidly greedy for power as any capitalist they attacked, but I'd have sworn there wasn't a yellow stool pigeon among them. Yeah, I'd have sworn that too, Larry. I hope his soul rots in hell, whoever it is. Yes, so do I. How did you locate me? Oh, through Mother. I told her not to tell anyone. Oh, uh, no, she didn't tell me, uh, but she kept all your letters. I found where she'd hid them, uh, and I sneaked up there after she was arrested. I would have thought she was a woman who kept letters. No, I wouldn't either. There's nothing soft or sentimental about Mother. I haven't written her for two years, or anyone else. You know, it's funny she kept in touch with you for so long. When she's finished with someone, she's finished with them. And you know how she feels about the movement. Anyone who loses their faith in it is more than dead to her. Yet she seemed to forgive you. She didn't. She wrote to denounce me and bring the sinner to repentance. Well, then what made you leave the movement, Larry? Was it on Mother's account? Who the hell put that idea in your head? Well, nothing except I remember that uh, little fight you had with her just before you left. Well, if you do, I don't. That was 11 years ago. You were only seven years old. If we quarreled, it was because I told her I'd become convinced that the movement was a beautiful pipe dream. Oh, I don't remember it that way. Well, blame it on your imagination and forget it. You asked me why I quit the movement. I had a lot of good reasons. One was myself, another was my comrades. And the last was that breed of swine called men in general. As for myself, I'd become convinced after 30 years of devotion to the cause that I wasn't made for it. I was born condemned to see both sides of a question. And when you're damned that way, the questions multiply until the end. They're all questions and no answers. As history proves, to be a worldly success at anything, especially revolution, you get to wear blinders like a horse and only see what's straight ahead of you. As for my comrades in the great cause, I felt about them as Horace Walpole did about England when he said he could love it if it wasn't for the people in it. Well, that's why I quit the cause. At any rate, you see, it had nothing to do with your mother. Well, but I bet Mother always thought it was on her account. I mean, you know her, Larry. To hear her go on sometimes, you'd think she was the movement. That's a hell of a thing to say after what happened to her. Oh, no, I wasn't sneering, Larry. No. No, I've said the same thing to her lots of times, you know, to kid her. 
Oh, I know I shouldn't now, but, uh, you know, I keep forgetting she's in jail. It seems so unreal to me. She's always been so free. Oh, I don't want to even uh, think about it. So what have you been doing all these years since you, uh, you know, left the coast, Larry? I've been a philosophical drunken bum and proud of it. I hope you've deduced why I answer a lot of impertinent questions from a total stranger. For that's all you are to me. I have a hunch you came to get something from me. Well, I have no answers, none, not even for myself. Unless you can call what Heine wrote in his poem to morphine an answer. Lo, sleep is good. Better is death. In sooth, the best of all were never to be born. That's a hell of an answer. Still, you never may know when it might come in handy. I don't suppose you've had a chance to get any news of your mother since she was in jail? Oh, no, no chance. Anyway, I don't think she really wants to talk to me. You see, we got in this fight just before that business happened. She bawled me out because I was going around with tarts. I told her you always acted the free woman. You never let anything stop you. Anyway, she told me that uh, she didn't give a damn what I did, except she began to suspect that I was losing interest in the movement. And were you? Sure I was. I couldn't go on forever believing that gang was going to change the world by shooting off their loud traps on soapboxes, sneaking around trying to blow up a bridge or a lousy building. And then I finally got wise that it was all a crazy pipe dream. And this, this business of someone selling out, that's what finished me off. You can understand how I feel, can't you, Larry? The days grow hot, O oh Babylon. Tis cool beneath thy willow trees. Goddamn stool pigeon! What? What do you mean? You can't call me that. <laughs> Hello, little son. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. You've grown big, boy. <laughs> how is your mother? Don't be a fool. Don't be a dollar. Buy me a drink. You sure, I'll buy you a drink, Hugo. I'm sorry, I got, uh, I got sore at you there. I'd remember that when you're, when you're sassed, you call everyone stool pigeon, huh? It's just no damn joke right at this time. Oh, gee, you passed out again. Hard look for it, Larry. You thought I was going to hit him? What do you think I am? I always stood up for him when everybody in the movement panned him for an old drunken has been. He had the guts to serve 10 years in the can in his own country, got his eyes ruined in solitary. I'd like to see some of them here stick that. Well, they're going to get their chance now to. Hey, Larry, tell me more about this dump. Who are all these, uh, these tanks in here? Who's that guy over there trying to catch pneumonia? That's Captain Lewis, one-time hero in the British Army. He strips to display that scar which he got from a native spear whenever he's completely plastered. The bewhiskered bloke next to him is General Wattoon, who led a commando in the war. They met up when they worked in the Boer War spectacle in the St. Louis Fair, and they've been bosom friends ever since. They dream away the hours in happy dispute over the brave days in South Africa, when they were trying to murder each other. He was in it too. Correspondent for some English paper. His nickname here is Jimmy Tomorrow. What do they do for a living? As little as possible. Once in a while, one of them makes a successful touch somewhere. And some of them get a few dollars a month from connections at home, who pay it on the condition that they never come back. The rest live on free lunch and their old friend Harry Hope, who doesn't give a damn what a man does or doesn't do. 
as long as he likes him. That must be a tough life. Don't waste your pity. They manage to stay drunk and keep their pipe dreams, and that's all they ask out of life. It isn't often that men attain the true goal of their heart's desire. And that applies to Harry himself. He's so satisfied with life that he hasn't set foot out of this place since his wife died 20 years ago. He has no need of the outside world. The place does a fine trade from the market across the street and the dock workers. So in spite of Harry's thirst and his generous heart, he comes out even. He never worries about hard times. As long as there's friends from the old days when he was a jitney, Tammany politician and a friendly brewery to tide him over. Pat McGloin, his pal sitting beside him, was a police lieutenant in the lush days of graft when everything went. But he got too greedy. And when the usual reform investigation came along, he was caught red-handed and thrown off the force. Joe there ran a colored gambling house then. The hell of a sport. Well, that completes our family circle of inmates, except for the two barkeeps and their girls, three ladies of the pavement that room on the third floor. I never want to see a whore again. I mean, they always get you in Dutch. Why admit me from your who's who and dipsomania lie? It's an unpardonable slight. Yes, generous stranger. I trust you're generous. I was born in the purple, the sun, Mm, well, unfortunately, not the heir of the late world-famous Bill Oban, king of the bucket shops. A uh, revolution deposed him. He was sent into exile. In fact, uh, not to mince matters. <laughs> they locked him in the can and threw away the key. <laughs> Alas, his was an adventurous spirit that pined in confinement. And so he died. That's well, tough luck. Hmm. Hmm. Even at Harvard, I discovered my father was well known by reputation. Although that was some time before the district attorney gave him so much unwelcome publicity. Even as a freshman, I was notorious. I was accepted socially with all the warm cordiality that uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who could have showed a drunken degress dancing the can can at high noon on Brattle Street. How it was my father's idea. <laughs> but I did make myself a brilliant student. Dirty trick on my classmates. Inspired by revenge, I fear. And I, I was a brilliant student in law school, too. And my father wanted a lawyer in the family. Oh, he had a thorough knowledge of the law close at hand in the house to help him find fresh ways to evade it. But I discovered the loophole of whiskey, and so escaped his jurisdiction. Speaking of whiskey, sir, reminds me, and I hope reminds you, that when greeting a prince, the customary salutation is what do you have? Nick, all you guys think I made a dough. Broke. Uh, you haven't the thirsty look of the impecunious. I judge you to be a plutocrat. Your pocket's stuffed with ill-gotten gains. Two or three dollars, at least. Don't think we'll question how you got it. What do you mean, how I got it? <laughs> That's a laugh, isn't it, Larry? Him thinking me a plutocrat? When I've been in the movement all my life? Oh, uh, one of those, huh? Why don't you go away and blow yourself up? That's a good lad. Hugo. Hugo is the only licensed preacher of that gospel here. Oh, dangerous terrorist, Hugo. He'd as soon blow the collar off a schooner of beers. Look at you. Let us ignore this useless youth, Larry. Let us join in prayer. But Hickey, the great salesman, will soon arrive, bringing the blessed bourgeois long green. Would that Hickey or death would come. Huh? <laughs> Meanwhile, 
I will sing a song. A beautiful old New England folk ballad, which I picked up at Harvard amid the debris of education. Oh, Jack, oh, Jack was a sailor lad, and he went to a tavern for gin, and he rapped and he rapped with a... But never a soul seemed in. The origin of this beautiful ditty is veiled in mystery, Larry. There, there was a legend brooded about in Cambridge laboratories. The Waldo Emerson composed it uh, during his uninformative period as a minister while he was trying to write a sermon. But my own view is that it goes back much further. And Jonathan Edwards is the author of both words and music. Oh, he rapped and rapped and he tapped and tapped enough to wake the dead till he heard a damsel. Oh, no window right over his head. Rocky, bejeez, can't you keep that crazy bastard quiet? And now the influence of a good woman enters our mariner's life, Larry. Well, perhaps good isn't the word, but very, very kind. Whoa, come up, she cried, my sailor lad, and you and I'll agree, and I'll show you the prettiest that ever you ever did see. You see, Larry, the lewd Puritan touch, obviously, and it grows more marked as we go on. Oh, he put his arms around her waist. And gazed in her bright blue eyes. Piano! <laughs> what do you think this dump is a dump? Give him the bums rush upstairs. Lock him in his room. Come now. Please, Rocky. Please, I'll go crazy. I'm not room alone as hard as. Please, Harry. Please, please stay here. I'll be quiet. What the hell are you doing to him, Rocky? Leave him alone. As long as he's quiet. <sighs> Thanks, Harry. You're a good scout. Can't trust nobody. Leave it to that dago to keep order. It's like bedlam in a cat house, singing and everything. And you, big barfly, you're a hell of a help to me. There ain't gonna be no more drinks in the house till hell freezes over. Good God. Have I been drinking at the same table with a bloody kaffir? Hello, Captain. You coming up for air? <laughs> kaffir? Who's he? Kaffir, that's a nigger, Joe. That's Joe Carnahim, Joe. He don't know you. He's still blind drunk. A great mistake. I missed him at the Battle of Modere River. With my rifle, I shoot damn fool limey officers by the dozen. But him I miss. <laughs> hey, wake up, Cecil, you bloody fool. Don't you know your old friend Joe? He's white, Joe is. <laughs> Profound apologies, Joseph, old chum. <laughs> Eyesight a trifle blurry, I'm afraid. <laughs> Whitest colored man I ever knew. Proud to call you my friend. Oh, I know it's a mistake, Captain. You is regular, even if you is annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't stand for nigger from nobody. In the old days, somebody calls me a nigger, he ends up in the hospital. Me, in old days in Transvaal, I was so tough and strong. I, I grab axle of ox wagon with full load and lift like feather. As for you, my balmy boar that walks like a man, I say it again. It was a grave error in our foreign policy ever to set you free. Oh, now, Cecil, Pete, we must forget the war. Boer and Britain each fought fairly and played the game until the better man won. And then we shook hands. We are all brothers within the Empire, united beneath the flag on which the sun never sets. Ship me somewhere 
east of Suez, where the best is like the worst, where there ain't no Ten Commandments, and a man can raise a thirst. On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder. <laughs> China, cross the bay. Got you there already, Jimmy. West is best here and east is west. And tomorrow is yesterday. What more do you want? <sighs> Come now, Larry, old friend. You pretend a bit of cynic philosophy. But in your head. You are the kindest man among us. The hell you say? Tomorrow, yes. It's high time I got myself straightened out. <laughs> I must have this suit cleaned and pressed. I can't look like a tramp when I... Yes, sir. White folks always said I was white. <laughs> the days when I was flush. Joe Moss the only colored man they allows in the white gambling houses. You're all right, Joe. You're white, they tells me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me play craps, though, because they knew I could make them dice behave. Any other game, any limit you like, Joe, they says. Man, the money I lost. <laughs> Yeah. Look at the big chief in them days. He knew I was white. I'd save my dough so I could start my own gambling house. The folks in the know, they tells me, you see the man at the top, then you never has trouble. You get Harry Hope to give you a letter to the chief. And he does. <laughs> Ain't that right, Harry? Huh? Sure, I gave you a letter. I said you was white. There, you see, Captain. I went to see the chief shaking in my boots. And there he was, sitting behind a big desk, looking as big as a freight train. He don't look up. He keeps me waiting and waiting. And after what seems like an hour to me, he says slow and quiet like he didn't mean no harm. You won't open a gambling joint, does you, Joe? But he don't give me no chance to answer. He jumps up looking as big as two freight trains, and he pounds his fist like a ham on a desk, and he shouts, You black son of a bitch! Harry says you're white, and you better be white. There's a little iron room up the river waiting for you. Then he sits down, and he says, Quiet again. All right, you're gonna open and get the hell out of here. So I opens, and he finds out I was white sure enough, cause I run wide open for years, and I pays my sugar on the dot, and me and the cops is friends. <laughs> Them old days, many as a night I used to come in here, this used to be a first class hangout for sports in them days. Good whiskey. Fifteen cents due for two bits. <laughs> I throws down a fifty-dollar bill like it was trash paper. And I says, Drink it up, boys. I don't want to change. Ain't that right, Harry? Yes. And me, geez, if I ever seen you throw fifty cents on the bar now, I know I had delirium tremens. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Harry, old chum. I will have a drink now you mention it, seeing it's so near your birthday. I say I can't hear you. No, I was afraid you wouldn't. I don't have to hear you, but jeez. Booze is the only thing you ever talk about. True, true. 
Yet there was a time when my conversation was more comprehensive. But as I became burdened with the years, it seemed rather pointless to discuss my other subject. You can't joke with me. How much room ran the army? Tell me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Adding always baffled me. <laughs> Subtraction's my forte. <laughs> Think you're funny, Captain Bejiz. Showing off your wounds. Put on your clothes, for Christ's sake. This ain't no Turkish bath. Lousy, limey army. Took him years to lick a gang of Dutch hayseeds. Got tried, Harry. Give him hell. I give you my word of honor. As an officer and a gentleman, you shall be paid tomorrow. Be spare it, Harry. Tomorrow, without fail. There you are, Harry. Sure, what could be fair? A promise is a promise, as I've often discovered. I mean you, too. Old Grafton Flatfoot. Fine company for me, but geez. Been living in my flat since Christ knows when, and you ain't even got the decency to get me upstairs where I got a good bed. Kept me down here waiting for Ricky to show up. Hoping I'd blow you to more drinks. I did my damnedest to get you up. But you said you couldn't bear the flat because it was one of those nights when memory brought poor old Bessie back to you. Ah, oh, yes. I remember now. I could almost see her in every room just as she used to be. And it's 20 years since I... There's no pipe dream of yesterday a touching thing. By all accounts, Bessie years. made the hell out of him. And I've never set foot out of this house since the day I buried it. Once she's gone, I didn't give a damn for anything. The boys was going to nominate me for alderman. Mm. She wanted it, and she was so proud. But when she was taken, I, I told them, no, boys, I can't do it. I'm through. I know about it. Well, Bessie would appreciate my grief. She wouldn't want it to keep me cooped up in here all my life. So I made up my mind to go out soon. Take a walk around the wood, see all the friends I used to know, get together with the boys. My birthday. Tomorrow. That'd be the right time to turn over a new leaf. Sixty. I ain't too old. It's the prime of life, Harry. Hmm. Time I took hold of myself. Tomorrow, I must get my things from the laundry. Clean collar and shirt. If I wash the ones I've got on anymore, they'll fall apart. <laughs> I must make a good appearance. I've heard rumors the management were at their wit's end and would be only too willing to have me run the publicity department for them again. All I have to do is get fixed up with a decent front tomorrow. It's as good as done. Poor Jimmy's off on his pipe dream again. I'm sorry we had to postpone our trip again this April, Pete. I'd hoped the blasted old estate would be settled by then. We'll make it next year, even if we have to work and earn our passage money. You'll stay with me at the old place just as long as you like. England in April. Oh, I want you to see that, Pete. I admit the Welt has its points, but it's not home, especially home in April. We've been together now for 40 years, and it don't seem a day too much. There ain't a lady living in the land as I'd swap for me dear old Dutch. There ain't a lady living in the land as I'd swap for me dear old Dutch. Yeah, Cecil, I can see how beautiful it must be, but I will enjoy when I am home, too. The Welt, yeah. You could put England on it and it would look like a Farmer's small garden. By God, there is space to be free. The air, like wine is. You don't need booze to be drunk. 
I'll make my stake and get my new gambling house open before you boys leave. You got to come to the opening. It's geez, Jimmy selling them off smoking the same hop. <laughs> Bug house will drive me stark raving loony yet. What? Uh, what did you say? Nothing, Harry. I had a crazy thought in my head. Crazy is right. Hey, old wise guy. Damned old fool anarchist, I won't work her. You'll pay up tomorrow, or I'll, I'll start a Harry Hope revolution. <laughs> I'll, I'll tie a dispossessed bomb to your tails and blow you out in the street. <laughs> I'll, I'll make your movement move. <laughs> Sure, let's hot parts and work. Sitting here laughing at your jokes so early in the morning. On an empty stomach. Who asked you to laugh anyway? But Jesus, Bessie never forgive me if she knew I had you living in her flat, throwing ashes and cigar butts on her carpet. <laughs> you know her opinion of you, Mac. That Pat McGloin is the biggest drunken crafter that ever disgraced the police force, she used to say. If I had my way, he'd get booted out in the gutter on his fat behind. Sometimes she didn't say behind, either. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't mean it. She was angry at me because you used to get me drunk. God, Bess, she had a heart of gold underneath her sharpness. She knew I was innocent of all the charges. One moment, please. Lieutenant McGloin. Are you aware that you're under oath? You know what the penalty for perjury is? Come now, Lieutenant. Isn't it a fact that you're guilty as hell? No, don't say how about your old man. I'm asking the questions. Gentlemen of the jury. The court will now recess while the DA sings out a little ditty that he learned at Harvard. It was composed in a wanton moment, by the dean of the divinity school, on a moonlight night in July 1776, while sobering up in a Turkish bath. Oh, come up, she cried, my sailor lad, and you and I'll agree, and I'll show you the prettiest... Rocky! Hey, uh, okay, please. Please, don't make Rocky bust me upstairs. I go crazy alone. I, I apologize. I apologize, man. Don't get sore. I was only kidding you. You will let me take your case, won't you, Mac? Yeah, sure, Willie. And it'll make your reputation. Hey, Mac. What the hell do you think's happened to Hickey? I hope he turns up. <laughs> you remember the gag he always pulls about his wife and the Iceman? <laughs> <laughs> Opening time, boss. Why didn't you oh. go to bed, boss? I think you'd never turn up this time of the morning. Someone's coming now. Oh, that's only my two pigs. It's about time they showed. You will keep them dumb birds quiet. I'm going to catch a couple more wings here. And I don't want no damn fool laughing and screeching. Hey. Never thought I'd see the day when Harry hopes would have Todd slipping in it. What would Bessie think? Hmm? But I don't let him use my rooms for business. Pay the rent. She's more Mitch. than I can yeah. say for <laughs> Did she smack? I'll, I'll bet Bessie's doing somersaults in her grave. <laughs> Jeez, Pam. This place is a morgue with all these stiffs on deck. Hey, you old wise guy. Ain't you died yet? Not yet, Margie. But I'm waiting impatiently for the end. Yeah. Hey, who's the new guy? Front of you? Hey, kid. You want to have a good time? Huh? Hey, hell with him. Yeah. You dumb brudge. <laughs> Cut the loud talk. Sit down before I knock you down. Oh. Well, 
How do your tramps do? Uh, pretty good. How about sure? We nailed a couple of all-night guys. And six, seven, your boobs on the sticks. Think I'd have voted them. <laughs> We think we said luck, you know. So we steers them to a real hotel. We figure, you know, they're too stink on the bottom as much, and we can cop a good night's sleep in beds that ain't got cobblestones on a mattress like the ones in this dump. Yeah, we was out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't bother us much that way, but they wouldn't go to sleep either, see? Jeez, I never heard such gabby guys. So, here we are. Yeah, I see you, but I don't see no dough yet. Right on the job, ain't he, Margie? Yeah, a little businessman, that's him. <laughs> Come on, Dick. What, you scared we're holding out on you? Wait, well, Grabs, you think it was him done the way. <laughs> hey, you're Grabs. I hope it chokes you. Hey, you dumb baby dolls, give me a pain. What would you do with money if I wasn't around? Give it off the sub, pimp. Geez, what's the difference? Boy, didn't mean that, Rocky. A lot of difference, get me? Sure, don't get sore. Geez, can't you take a little kitten? Hey, come on, Rocky. Pop was only kidding. We know you don't live off us. You got a regular job. That's why we like you. You a bartender. Sure, I'm a bartender. And I treat you girls right, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Uh, geez, I'm wise you hold out on me. But I know it ain't much. So what the hell? I'll let you get away with it. <laughs> hey, you know you want to kid him about that stuff. So if you're right, if he beat you up. Geez, I bet he'd give you awful beating once he started. Guinea's got awful tempers. Well, anyways, we wouldn't keep no pimp like we're regular old whores. We ain't that bad. Oh, no, we're tots, but that's all. Hey. Ah! Hey, Rocky! Cora got back around 3 o'clock. She woke up Chuck and dragged him out of the hay to go to a chop suey <laughs> joint. Imagine them standing for that stuff. <laughs> I bet they've been sitting around, kidding themselves with an old pipe dream about getting married and settling down on the farm. Jeez, <laughs> when Chuck's on a wagon, they never lay off that dope. Yeah, of all the pipe dreams in this dump, they got the nuttiest. They've been dreaming it for years. Every time Chuck goes on a wagon. What would getting married get him? But the farm stuff is the sappiest part. When both of them have been dragged up in this ward and ain't never been near a farm than Coney Island. <laughs> they get DTs if they ever heard of Cricket Church. <laughs> I heard Cricket once on my cousin's place in Jersey. I couldn't sleep a week. Gee, can you picture a good barkeep like Chuck digging spuds? And imagine a who hustling a cow's home. Hey, Rocky, you wanted to call Cora that. I mean, she may be a tart. Oh, but, uh, sure, sure. That's all I meant, the tart. Yeah, but he's right about the damn cows, Margie. Geez, I bet Cora don't know which end of the cow has the horn. <laughs> I'm gonna ask her. Come on, here's your chance. Hello, Bum. Jeez. The morgue on a rainy Sunday night. Hello, wise guy. Ain't you croaked yet? Not yet, Cora. Damn tiring, is waiting for the end. Oh, Guan, you'll never die. You have to hire somebody to croak you with an axe. Hey, you dumb hooker. Cut a lot of talk. Is in a cat house? Oh. <laughs> hey, Cora, how you doing? Hey, Chuck, what's happening? Oh. <laughs> well, I thought he's dumb as a hooker hang out on never coming. You seem down on the ladies. I hate every bitch that ever lived. You can understand how I feel, can't you, when I was getting mixed up with that tart that made me have that fight with Mother. Oh, what the hell does it matter to you? You're in the grandstand. You're through with life. I'm glad you remember that. Who's the guy with Larry? That tight wad. The hell with him. Say, Cora, wise me up. Which end of the cow is the horn on? <laughs> oh, don't bring that up. Me and this overgrown tramp's been scrapping about the farm. He says Jersey's the best place, and I said Long Island on account it will be near Coney. And then I tells him, how do I know you're off of periodicals for life? And I tells her I'm off the stuff for life. And she beats she won't be married a month before I'll throw it in the face she was a tart. Jeez, baby, I tells her, why should I? What the hell you think I think I'm marrying a virgin? <laughs> why should I kick? As long as you lay off and don't do no cheating with the ice man or nobody. <laughs> yeah, that's on a level, baby. Oh, <laughs> oh you big tramp. And you're tired. I'll buy you a drink. I'll do anything. No, this round's on me. I run into luck. That's why I dragged Chuck out of bed to celebrate. It was a sailor. I rolled him. 
Listen, it was a scream. My dogs were giving out when I seen this guy holding up a lamppost. So I hurried to get him before a cop did. I said so. Hello, handsome. Wanna have a good time? Jeez, he was paralyzed. One of them polite jacks. He tries to bow to me, imagine. And I had to prop him up where he fell on his nose. Lady, he says, can you kindly tell me the nearest way to the Museum of Natural History? <laughs> can you imagine at 2 a.m.? As if I'd know where the dump was anyway. But I says, uh, sure thing, honey boy. I'll be only too glad. So I steered him into a side street where it was dark, and I propped him up against the wall, and I give him a frisk. And, and what do you think he done? And she said, I ain't lying. He begins to laugh, the big sap. <laughs> Quit tickling me, he says, while I was frisking him for his throat. <laughs> and he had died. And th th then I turned him around and gave him a shove to start him. Just keep going, I told him. It's a big white building on your right. You can't miss it. Oh. <laughs> he must be swimming in the North River yet. <laughs> Ain't Uncle Sam a sap to trust guys like that with dough? Oh, I picked 12 bucks off of him. So come on, Rocky, set him up. Oh, say, Chuck's kidding about the ice man a minute ago reminds me. Where the hell's Hickey? That's what we're all wondering. You ought to be here. Me and Chuck seen it. You've seen Hickey? Yeah. Hey, boss. Boss, boss, come to. Cora's seen Hickey. Where did you see him, Cora? Right on the next corner. He was standing there. We said, welcome to our city. The gang's expecting you with their tongues hanging out a yard long. And I kidded him. How's the Iceman, Hickey? How's he doing at your house? And he laughs and says, fine. And then he says, tell the gang I'll be along in a minute. I'm just finishing figuring out the best way to save him and bring him peace. Pajisi set up a new gag. <laughs> it's a wonder he didn't bother your Salvation Army uniform and show up in that. <laughs> Go ahead and get him, Rocky. Tell him we're waiting to be saved. Yeah, Harry, he was only kidding, but he was funny, too, somehow. He, he was different or something. Sure, he was sober, baby. That's what made him different. Sure. Gee, ain't I dumb. Dumbest rod I ever seen. Sober. That's funny. He's always lapped up a good sonner on his way here. Well, but geez, he won't be sober long. He'll be good and right for my birthday party tonight at 12. Listen, he's fixed some new gag to pull on us. We'll pretend to let him kid us, see? And we'll kid the pants off of him. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the old son of a bitch. Hello, gang. Charlie, old pals, in all kinds of weather. They always stick together, and we're always gang. And ever the same soul give me for friendship, my jolly old pals. And another little drink won't do us any harm. Do your duty, Brother Rocky. Bring on the rat poison. How goes it, Governor? With Jesus, the old bastard, it's good to see you. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Welcome, boy. Oh, uh, Willie. Hi, <laughs> <Hiya>, Oscar. <laughs> Hello, Joe. All right, you Jack Lewis. General Wet John. Oh, what the Lord? Hello, Hugo. <laughs> Oh, 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 Jeez, Hickey, you look like a million dollars. <laughs> it's a key, Hickey. Same old room. Oh, thanks, Rocky. I'll be going up in a little while and grab a snooze. I haven't been able to sleep lately. I'm tired as hell. A couple hours of good kip will fix me. First time I ever heard you worry about sleep. But you should never would go to bed. Get a couple of slugs under your belt. You'll forget sleeping. Here's mud in your eye, Hickey. Uh, drink hearty, boys and girls. 
But Jesus is that a new stunt? Drinking your chaser first? Uh, no, I forgot to tell Rocky. You'll have to excuse me, boys and girls, but I'm off the stuff for keeps. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, sure, sure. Join the Salvation Army, ain't you? Get elected president of the WCT. <laughs> Take a bottle away from Rocky. We don't want to tempt him into sin. Uh, well, I know it's hard to believe, but uh, Cora was right, Harry. I have changed. I mean about the booze. I don't need it anymore. But Jesus, Cora says you was coming here to save us. Well, go on, get this joke off your chest. Start the service. Sing a goddamned hymn if you like. We'll all join in the chorus. No drunk could turn into this view. Oh, hello, oh. Governor. You don't think I come around here peddling any brand of temperance bunk, do you? Just because I quit the stuff don't mean I'm going prohibition. I'm not that ungrateful. It's given me too many good times. So if anybody wants to get drunk, if that's the only way they can be happy and feel at peace with themselves, why the hell shouldn't they? Hell, I know that game from soup to nuts. I wrote the book. The only reason I quit is... Well, I finally had the guts to face myself and throw overboard that damn lying pipe dream that was making me miserable and do what I had to do for the happiness of all concerned. Then all at once, I was at peace with myself and I didn't need the booze anymore. But what the hell? Don't let me be a wet blanket. Set him up again, Rocky. Here, keep the balls coming to last kill and ask for more. Jeez, a roll of the choke a hippopotamus. Fill up you guys. That sounds more like a hickey. <laughs> that water wagon bull. <laughs> Cut the act and have a drink, for Christ's sake. There's no act, Governor. But that don't mean I'm a teetotal grouch and can't be in the party. Why else do you think I'm here except to have a party, like I've always done, and help celebrate your birthday tonight? You've all been good pals to me. Best friends I've ever had. And I've been thinking about you ever since I left the house. All the time I was walking over here. Walking? But you should mean to say you walked? I sure as hell did. All the way from the wilds of darkest Astoria. I seem to get here before I know it. And that ought to encourage you, Governor. Show you a little walk around the wards. Nothing to be scared about. It was going on 12 when I went to the bedroom to tell Evelyn I was leaving. Six hours, say. No, less than that. Because I've been standing on the street corner some time before Chuck and Cora came along thinking about all of you. Of course, I was only kidding Cora with that stuff about saving you. But no, I wasn't either. But I didn't mean booze. I meant save you from pipe dreams. Because I know now, from my experience, that they're the things that can really poison and ruin a guy's life and keep him from finding any peace. If you knew how free and contented I feel now, why, I'm like a new man. And the cure for them is so damn simple once you got the nerve. Just stop lying to yourself and kidding yourself about tomorrows. Hell, this begins to sound like a damn sermon on the way to lead the good life. <laughs> That's in my blood, I guess. My old man used to wail salvation into my hiney with a birch rod. He was a preacher in the sticks of Indiana, like I've told you. Got my knack of sales gap from him, too. He was the boy that could sell those Hoosier hay seeds building lots along the Golden Street. But don't look at me like that, boys and girls. I'm not trying to sell you a gold brick. Nothing up my sleeve's honest. Let's take an example. Any one of you, huh? Take you, Governor. That walk around the ward you never take. What about it? Well, you know as well as I do, Harry, everything about it. Well, but Jesus, I'm going to take it. Of course you are, because I'm going to help you. I know it's the thing that you've got to do before you know what real peace means. Same thing with you, Jimmy. You're going to have to try and get your old job back and know tomorrow's about it. I... No, 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 don't tell me. I know all about tomorrow's. I wrote the book. I, I don't understand you, Hickey. I admit I foolishly delayed, but as it happens, I just made up my mind that as soon as I could get straightened out... <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, that's the spirit. And I'm gonna help you, Jimmy, because you've always been damn kind to me. And I want to prove how grateful I am to you. When it's all over and you don't have to nag yourself anymore, you'll be grateful to me, too. And all the rest of you, ladies included, are in the same boat, one way or another. God, you've hit the nail on the head, Hickey. This dump is the palace of pipe dreams. Well, well. The old grandstand philosopher speaks, huh? And you think you're the big exception, eh? Life doesn't mean a damn to you anymore. You're retired from the circus. You're impatiently waiting for the end. And the good old long sleep. Well, I think a lot of you, Larry, you old bastard, and I'll try to make an honest man out of you, too. What the devil are you hinting at? Well, you don't have to ask me, do you? Wise old guy like you? Just ask yourself. I'll bet you know. He's got your number all right, Larry. That's the stuff, Hickey. He's got no right to sneak out of everything. Well, hello. 
A stranger in our midst. I didn't notice you before, brother. My name's uh, Parrot. I'm an old friend of Larry's. What are you staring at? Oh, no offense, brother. I was just trying to figure. Haven't we met before, someplace? No, this is the first time I've been east. No, you're right. I know that's not it. You see, in my game, to be a shark at it, you teach yourself never to forget a name or a face. But still, I know damn well there's something I recognize about you. We're members of the same lodge, in some way. What are you talking about? You're nuts. Don't kid me, little boy. I'm a good salesman, so damn good the firm was glad to take me back after every drunk. And what made me good was I could size up anyone. But still, I don't... Well, never mind. I can tell you're having trouble with yourself, and I'll be glad to do anything I can to help a friend of Larry. Mind your own business, Hickey. He's nothing to you. Or to me. You're keeping us all in suspense. Tell us more about how you're going to save us. Well, hell, don't get sore, Larry. We're old pals. I've always liked you a lot. You know that. Forget it, Hickey. Fine, fine. Well, that's the spirit. Well, what's the matter, everybody? Come on, drink up. A little action. Have another. Well, this is a celebration. Now, forget it if anything I said sounded too serious. You think I'm talking out of turn? Just tell me to go chase myself. Little boys and girls, I'm not trying to put anything over on you. It's just that I know now, from experience, what a lying pipe dream can do to you. And how damn relieved and contented with yourself you'll feel when you're rid of it. Sleepy all of a sudden. That long walk must be gotten to me. I better go upstairs. Hell of a trick to go dead on you like this. But no, boys and girls, I've never known what real peace was until now. It's a grand feeling. Like when you're sick and suffering like hell and the doctor's just shot in the arm. The pain goes and you drift off. You let yourself go at last. You sink down to the bottom of the sea. Rest in peace. There's no further you have to go. Not one single hope or dream left in argument. But you'll all know what I mean. Thank you.